Here you come, Dor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time we're going to have a prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and all that you do for us. Please bless us all who are here and help us in making good decisions for our borough. We ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Roll call. <coughs> Bob Marlette. Present. Scott Cutshaw. Here. Lisa Nutson. Here. Steve Nutson. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. Heavy. Yep. Jim Still. Here. Does anybody here have anything for the for us to hear? My name's Steve Orange. I live here in West Town. I got a couple concerns here. And <coughs> Crosswalk signs that has the the guy on there, the green one, isn't working down here. Uh, it's a crossman post office right there on the same side as uh, I don't know if I was the Elks Club there or something. It's not working. Okay, that needs fixed. Uh, I wanted to see if you could do something about your uh, jail employees parking downtown around the uh, post office. Okay, because there's supposed to be a two hour time limit on them. They're not putting money in the meter to sit there. Plus, they're taking up so many spaces that the businesses within that area don't have any room for their customers to come in, especially the post office, because that post office gets busy. So, and those, those jail employees are just parking there probably eight. 10 hours a day, you know what I mean? <clears throat> They're taking up a bunch of spaces down there that the customers for the businesses there could actually be used and stuff. And you know there's a two hour time of which I don't know if you did away with that or not. That's one of my concerns. Another one is your sheriff's cars, they got a sticker on the back. It's a, they call it, it's a fascist sticker because it says in God we trust and they got a blue line. So that's actually that considered a fascist sticker because only blue lives matter. Okay, plus in God we trust. It's separation of church and state, I'm sorry. Okay, just like your prairie did today. Okay. Uh, there's something else. Oh, the uh, condemned houses around Lewistown, they're not being torn down. I've seen a couple of them there. They're just sitting there. So because it's condemned, it doesn't necessarily mean it can be torn down. And the borough oh, doesn't. doesn't. No. Oh, so okay. when they're condemned, that means they got violations that nobody can live in them. They do have the right to go in and make those repairs, but that's right. the only reason they're allowed to go in those buildings. But they're but, not fixing them up yet. So but they're okay. still in private hands. We can't tear them down. Okay. Okay. Uh, something else here, too. I think I, that was the main one here. But uh, your religion, sorry, Lisa. The newest religion, Satanic Temple. Okay. Anybody want to belong to them? No. Can I bring them in here and say a prayer too? Would that be all right? You get a prayer from a Christian? Okay. We'll take it into consideration. Well, then I'll just see if I can't file a lawsuit against you on it's a uh, violation of the uh, Constitution. Okay. So, it's not a violation of the Constitution. Separation of church and state. It's not in the Constitution. No, that's we, not we did some legal research prior to implementing the uh, prayer in school, and we're able to determine that the U.S. Supreme Court in 2014 
has said it's okay to start a meeting with a prayer as long as it doesn't denigrate, proselytize, or uh, betray an impermissible government purpose. Okay. So, uh, I, I must have read something different. Okay. That ain't what mine says. So. I think that was it there. Yeah, <coughs> but as far as the sheriff's cars, that's yeah. not us. You need to go to the county for that. We have no you control. Don't control. We don't, we don't control. have no control over. No, it's all the only county level. Oh, oh, no control there for it. Why is the tax collector not in this building? She decided she decided to move. <laughs> that ain't what I heard, sir. That is not what I heard. It's the truth. We did not I her. her. I understand. I understand that, but that ain't what. What I heard was: Are you charging people to hold an office in this building or any county building? She was paying rent. She's paying. Yeah, paying rent. rent. Same. Yeah, paying no. rent. When she, we were paying her, she was paying her rent. Does anybody else pay rent? No. Everybody out of the borough employee. She's not a borough employee. Oh, she's no. not. She's she not is a not a borough employee. Oh, but no. she's an elected right. But she collects taxes for the borough. She's and for the school. Yeah, and for the school. And the school district. District. And she's the not. County. Okay. Okay. Thank hey. you, Mr. Art. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Bye now. <clears throat> I'm going to turn this over to the program manager now. Oh, oh yeah. I uh, have a motion to pass this consent agenda. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Now I'm going to turn it over to the program manager. Okay. Uh, number one, digester, number one, repair status. We did put out bid requests for the initial phase of the repair of the digester. We received one before the deadline. We received the second one, which you'll see on my screen here. They came in afterwards. Now, the reason it came in afterwards, they coordinated with EADS ahead of time and said they were having trouble getting their quotes from the subcontractors. They let EADS know it would be a day late, which it was, so they did coordinate it with our uh, engineering firm first. So that doesn't stop the borough council from making a decision. But the first thing we need to do is the borough council needs to vote to uh, add the Snyder environmental quote to the agenda and to discuss it. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Votes? Okay, so you have two quotes. One from uh, UGI, is it UGI, it's UGS, isn't it? USG. USG, so that's, that's actually USG. Um, for 597,500 for the removal of the roof and sludge removal and cleaning. Same process for Snyder Environmental, it's 532,750. Um, it's about $65,000 less. Um, I did talk to EADS about quality of work between the two. Um, and they provided me some information that, uh, based on quality work alone, they would recommend uh, USG receive the quote. They've dealt with the other company as well, uh, but between the two for quality work, they recommend USG. But it is council's decision to go for the quality work or for the lowest bidder. Now, this will probably be paid for out of the loan from the county. I received back the legal comments from Mark Remy today. I'll send those to county tomorrow. Um, but that's the initial pot of money I'm assuming that we will use to pay <coughs> for the $1 million dollar loan. Um, so the question tonight is, that's why I got the two asterisks, is which contract does the council want to approve? But before I turn it over to you, I'm going to turn it over to E to see if they have any additional comments or information for council to make a decision. You Anything else, to, Lucas? We make a motion. We go with the one that we direct. Hold on, hold on, Maggie. I turned over them first. I, I think your comments were addressed everything that we had laid out for you, Kim. I think you did an excellent job of explaining that. Uh, I was sensitive to the uh, quote received a, a day late than the proposal, but I chose to move it forward anyway, knowing that they put, put us on notice that they were waiting for some contract price. Um, and, and yes, I, I have to stand forth that. Uh, USG was asked to provide some references, and I think their reference list far exceeded the reference list that was provided by Snyder Environmental. So on that, 
and those two points alone, um, I, I think we have to stick to the recommendation of, of USG, even though it's more pricier. You might want to take action to reject the late bid, and that you only have, then you only have one bid that you have to consider. Does it make a difference that they coordinated with with us EADS ahead of time that it was late? I mean, I haven't seen the I didn't review the bid documents, so I don't know. But I mean, were these bids or were they were they quotes? Yeah, Co-stars uh, quotes. Co-stars quotes. And I have one here if you need to see them. I mean, <coughs> I have no problem with them. So did they give us any timelines for having boots on the ground? Um, neither one of them were provided any timeline on that. But they, they, they do want to have this done this summer. Okay. Uh, so, and it's so doable within this construction season. Yes, they, they can have this done in the June, July, August time frame. So this is USG. Make a motion we go with the recommended work. Uh, second. The recommended quote of USG? Yeah. I don't think when we're spending this much money, we want to make sure it's done right. I have a motion, I need a second. Thank you. Well, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. Number two, monthly work session. We still have the one for the 25th of April, 5.30 p.m. still on our schedule. May is TBD. Uh, would you guys like to discuss some days in May, or you want to wait to the May council meeting? We can, we can discuss it later. If you want to go to the president, you can call a special meeting, call a special work session at a later date. It's up to you guys. Any thoughts on that? Let's wait until May. It's fine. Thank you. Okay. Grants. City, fire department, DLI. Is requesting support from council for a DCED grant request. Let me find it in here to show you. Um, Jim, you want to say something? I assume. Sure. Uh, this is to apprise you of our intention to apply for what's known as a um, American Rescue Plan Act COVID-19 multi-purpose community facilities grant program. Uh, the minimum amount that could be awarded would be two hundred and fifty thousand. Maximum would be two million. Very competitive. Obviously this is uh, federal money that is uh, being provided to the state through the foresight of our um, uh, federal legislators that uh, were able to you know move it through. Um, Deadline is next week. I will be asking for a letter of support from you folks as soon as the estimate is known for the work that uh, is being proposed for city. Um, it's to look at a uh, pretty comprehensive upgrade of HVAC, electrical, exterior improvements, and site uh, details as well. City will be required to do a number of programmatic uh, things in conjunction with this particular program, but you know, apprising you folks of this opportunity. But I did not want to see um, pass this bus. I don't think it's going to be around, obviously, with the ARPA funds. Okay, I'm, I'm familiar with what Jim's talking about. I was there today, Humphrey's crew was in the building. Uh, they went through the building, they picked out things like air conditioning, heating units, windows, everything else. Uh, the city had took the initiative to apply for this grant, and they're prepared to do what they have to do on their behalf if the grant's granted. And 
I'm all in favor. Is it a match? No match. No match, no match required. Mm -hmm. They're prepared to go ahead with it, the, the grants. Yeah, there's there's some substantial things that the city will have to do programmatically mm -hmm. to address uh, the requirements. And there is some financial backing there for them. Okay. Thank you. Do you need? What do we need to take a vote? They're going to have to. So here is the reason I went to get this. This is the same grant we applied for for the community center that we turned down <coughs> because of the depth and the amount of work that was involved in. That's all I'm going to say is that's the same one. Um, there's a lot of engineering stuff that went into it. Does the grant cover all the fees and everything to go in with it, the engineering and all that stuff? So we're getting contractor estimates, and they will be provided to us. Uh, they're doing that as far as drugs. What, what cost is going to have to pay for by the borough? Anything? Nothing required at, at this time. At this time, but what about the future? I mean, because this is yeah, for city, yeah. this isn't for the borough. Uh, yeah, correct. I'm not aware that uh, it is going to require any um, you know, borough funds. It's primarily for a, uh, if you will, an, an entity <coughs> that is associated with you folks. So you need a letter of support, is that what you're seeing? There will be a letter of support uh, forthcoming. I don't know what the amount would be at this time. So. I mean, as far as from us, what do you mean? I would like a letter of support from you, yes, absolutely. I make a motion to move forward with a letter of support from the board of support. That's our motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You need to copy the minutes, Jim, right? Uh, that would be great, yes. Let me see. So you need to copy the minutes by April 20th. All right. <coughs> All right. Now we're down to recycling stats. They did conduct the weekend recycling not too long ago, a few weeks ago. I believe we had eight people show up that week, that weekend on that Saturday from like 8 to 12. Cost the borough about $300. So they are showing up. <coughs> the DCNR pool study survey results are completed, so that has been done. We've paid the fee of the study, which is $31,000. We have gone back to DCNR and requested our reimbursement of the $15,000 for that $31,000 cost. So we're just waiting to receive the money back from DCNR. Teams from negotiations are ongoing. We had another meeting today. The next meeting with them is scheduled for 15 May, which is five weeks from now. Fire department safety inspections are gonna start. <coughs> Originally it was this summer. We had our fire meeting last night and they're saying it should probably start one January, 2025. That's the goal of the fire department to get those processes started and up and running i do have a question on that okay not that i'm not in favor of or anything let's get that straight right off the bat but uh is this taking the place of what we used to have the crew go out and do the occupancy permit or is this going farther than that i think it's just the occupancy permit that's that's the one i think so they're not going to be out there doing anything where we could be potentially involved in a lawsuit because we didn't certify people don't job. not that i know of I'd have to go back to the chief. He's the one that's pushing it. Talk again. Well, Mark, well, Sean, do you know anything about that? I do not. Okay. Well, like last I said, was, well, within the last week was the first that I was uh, notified of these. I had made the last couple of fire committee meetings do the work. So, why isn't this be handled through codes? I think it's. Per, per your ordinance, it's the fire chief that's involved. It is the fire chief. Okay. Mark's right about that, but I do have a couple more questions here about it. Uh, and if it's the same as it was back before, uh, McKay dropped it. Remember, he was fire chief. He didn't want to deal with it. But when Chief Powell was on board, he had crew, and they went out <coughs> to the restaurants, places where people congregated, and they checked for this. The regular fire hazard, like clock doors, uh, lighting, 
all that kind of stuff. And also the occupancy part of it. Because each place in town, restaurants, bars, whatever, there's an occupancy. You're only allowed so many people in, okay? And if they were seat, had the seating capacity for that and that only, they issued a permit, and there was a fee for it. But uh, they didn't do anything like inspect wiring and anything of that nature. And once again, this is kind of new to me, because I've heard like three different stories now in the past week, all right? Uh, like I say, if it's just the occupancy permit, fine, I have no issues with it whatsoever, because my understanding is that permit money is going to be a fire department. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Every okay. Time you have it. okay, I'm very fine with that. Now, one more thing. This was brought up about a year ago, which I was totally in favor of, the occupancy part, okay? So we just want to start things in. But at that time, we could find no records around here. And now uh, if you can talk to Rex about this, because that's who I spoke to, but we couldn't find any records of any business establishment that they had seating charts for. So how can we go and inspect the place? You know what I mean? So uh, if that's the issue, who's going to go around and measure the building, see how many people can be in there at one time or whatever? I mean, that stuff kind of needs to be in place before they start this. Correct. Because we want everything on the up and go for them to go ahead and start. So what I'm asking for, let's get these answers here first and go from there. And if everything's fine, I'm, I'm all for it. I just want to make sure they're protected too. And of course, the fire department can sue you for something. That's the virus the next step up. You know, it's both of them, so. You'll have to have a meeting with the other mob. Go over what it is. I mean, they got stuff from other fire companies that have it to do the inspections. Sean, you're a deputy chief. For anything I say here, does that make sense to you? Well. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, we don't want to be held liable for lawsuits. Uh, I guess the, the last night, uh, Assistant Chief Shoot brought forms, <clears throat> forms that they use in Anne Arundel County, and the fire department does those inspections down there uh, just as a basis for what we would want to look at. Well, how about maybe get us a copy of that and we can review that? Come up with some Kim, sort did you of get a copy of those last night? Mm -hmm. Good copy. Well, I guess I have a copy of the copy. Well, let's see, we're getting one right now. So. <coughs> Think we have time to look at that and bring it back up again? All I was saying is it's under discussion with the fire chief. We already know we have to change the ordinances. We know it has to go through law and ordinance. We already know it has to go through council. This is just an FYI. And we're in the process of researching it to figure out what we could do to move forward with it. To help the fire department with some additional funds. Well, so we would fine. This, I'm very fine with that. So we would put this part of Chapter 24, Mark. Would that would that, would this would fit in? Well, there, you already have an existing ordinance. Yeah. I, I mean, I haven't looked at it in a long time. We probably want to take a look at that. Take a look at what they got from the other county. And see if they mesh. Can we do that at the next law ordinance? Probably. I would think. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure you're protected. That's the only I, I have. I appreciate that. Okay. Military banners. We have about 30 applicants. There's 25 spots, but I talked to them. And they're going to put double sided on some of the banners to make sure everybody that submitted a picture gets put <coughs> on there. It'll be about a month before they get here. And then uh, we'll be able to put them up downtown. Ben's guys will put them up downtown. So um, that's update for the military banners. Eads, wastewater collections, commercial EDU recommendations. I'll turn it over to Eads right now uh, to possibly give some recommendations on this. But before I do that, I went and saw John Brenneman this afternoon to try to grease the skids with Senator Ward's office for any grants that we apply for in the near future. Um, and he told me that whenever we do submit another grant, that uh, <clears throat> we go down and coordinate with him for a meeting with Senator Ward and the council members so that we can get the proper support to the political side down in Harrisburg 
to try to push some of these grants through because it hasn't been done in the past. So I'm trying to coordinate it where we get some political clout instead of just turning the paperwork in and crossing our fingers. Now, I was talking to John about some of these issues. He said his flat rate fee in Granville Township is 140 a quarter. The flat rate fee in Derry Township, I believe, is 135 a quarter. So that's just additional information for you guys to, to think about as you move forward. Go ahead, Lucas, if you have anything. Um, we don't have any recommendations finalized quite yet. We are coordinating with Burroughs staff on their EDU calculation research that they've done, uh, comparing current charged EDUs versus the potential for some of our commercial users of what they could be charged. Um, we're also working through budget projections. Now that we got one of the big items, we actually have a line item for that, for budgeting out. Because um, in the EDU recommendation, it's sort of the whole billing cycle and what the rates could be. So we're trying to work a couple alternative options for you folks to, to review. And that's, we're getting some of these final larger budget items that we sort of have to project out over the next five or 10 years. Because we don't want to, you know, jump at the rates right off the bat if it's something that, with like the million dollar loan from the county, we can sort of spread, spread that out with payments over the years. So um, we don't have anything pulled together quite yet, but we are working with borough staff to get that, all that information um, in a report. I think you'll have that ready by next council meeting? That's our hope. Right. Yep. Obviously, the, the digester number was a big part of that. You know, it could have been $2 million just as easy as it was right. you know, 600000 So um, we're working through that. Um, and some of the other big ticket items, we're getting some harder numbers to work with. If we get some numbers by the 25th of April, we can pull in the work sessions. So okay. the council. So we'll good. see what we can do on that. <clears throat> Number 10, town hall meeting. Um, do you guys want to have a town hall meeting? That's, that's all I got it on here for is do you want to have one or not? Yeah, I'm, I'm for a town hall meeting maybe a little bit later in the year. Well, that, yeah, that was yeah. last year. So am I. All right, we'll look at the dates later on then for a later on, which is fine. Number 11 and number 12, proposed new EMS building possibility, fire department vehicle maintenance plan. Those have been asked to be put on the agenda after it was published, so I need a, a vote from council to discuss number 11 and number 12. So moved. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Proposed new EMS building possibility. I haven't been in the loop on this, uh, but it, I was briefed last night, the fire committee was briefed last night on the possibility uh, and it's just a possibility of having a new EMS building for the borough of Lewistown. Whether it's just a police station or you know, a compilation of police and fire, that's yet to be determined. Um, the, the briefing last night was kind of, I don't know, Scott, Scott was there, it was kind of hasty, meaning he was asking for information or approval that was too soon in the process, in other words. Um, yeah, that's right, Steve was there too. So, Bottom line is, it's in discussion, it's in the mayor's hands. The mayor's working this with the chief and his her staff. Is it the Civil Service Commission or is it the Police Advisory Board that's working this? No, Police Advisory Board. Okay, Police Advisory Board. Okay, so they've got the light, the lead on this. Um, that, that's us, what I just mentioned to you there. There's nothing, nothing to be discussed. Right? That's what I was getting, there's nothing other yeah. than that. I don't have anything else. So. Yeah. Fire Department Vehicle Maintenance Plan. Uh, fire Department Committee voted to bring this to Council. Let's see, Fire Department. Come on, here we go. Vehicle Maintenance Plan for Firefighting Equipment. So the new quote is 13,137.41 for this year. <coughs> The quote went down 4000 some because the guy that does it actually moved closer to Lewis Town, so you don't got to pay all the hotel and lodging and all that stuff. Um, the, the other question on here that was brought up by the fire department 
is uh, is it worth spending the two thousand one hundred forty seven thirty eight on engine eleven thirty two three? I guess it's going away or something, Bob. What's it? Do you know what the or Sean? Do you know what the deal is on that one? Um, the plan for that engine was to use it for a grant for replacement. Is it is it still in service? Uh, for to haul manpower. That was uh, Chief Douglas's decision. All right. So then I think we need to adjust it to ten thousand nine hundred ninety dollars and three cents. So they would put a vehicle maintenance plan in place. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean. For all the vehicles but that, and the cost would be ten thousand nine hundred ninety dollars and three cents. Now I'm not sure what pot of money they're taking this out of. <coughs> we kind of talked to you last night about specialty tax, I guess. Maybe there's money left in ARPA, but again, that's a, a council's decision um, on funding this. Okay, one question on that. Once again, I'm not against this, so let's get that clear. Uh, one question I do have in this, and I'm familiar with the maintenance programs because when I was still riding fire trucks, well, we had one there also. If the maintenance man comes in, does his thing, he's over, and does his service work to the equipment, and he finds something wrong that's going to put it out of service or possibly cause a problem down the road, uh, he's paying the bill to fix it. <laughs> I would think that would be up to the fire Yeah, that's fire department. That'd be up to the fire station. It's either going to be done by the I'm fire asking, department. I'm just asking. I know, or they're going to come to us and ask for help. It's one of the two. I mean, I can't give you a definite answer right now, Bob. I have no idea. It's, it depends on cost. Let's say it's a thousand bucks. The fire department probably eat it. If it's twenty thousand, they may come to Burl for help. I don't know what the answer would be on that. So I think part of the challenge here too is you know we have an obligation to buy a fire truck right now. We don't know what those payments are going to be yet because the loan has, agreement hasn't been published yet. So I think we should kind of table this discussion and see where we land on the finance side of things um, with the loan to see if there's funds available. Do you don't want to do the <coughs> maintenance program? No, what I'm saying is I think it should be tabled until we know the financial situation of the fire specialty tax. And why was I told to bring it to council? Well, a little bit more thought on, on the process. And, um, you know, to be honest with you, if we're taking out a $1.6 million loan and there's no plan for the loan or no agreed interest rate, we've got to know what those payments are to make sure we got enough money to pay for the fire truck. Well, Abby was waiting. Hey. But, Kim. If the money's not there, you tell me where it's then coming from. Why'd you tell me to put it on the thing, the agenda? That's what I'm asking. I thought it was something the council wanted to discuss and make a decision on. But you're just saying, take yeah. it. We could have done that before yeah. well, until we got some more information. Yeah. <coughs> I'm not mad about it. I'm just, I'm just yeah. saying, why'd we do it? All right. Next thing. Mayor, what do you got, Mayor? Or no, Fire Chief is next. Fire Chief. Uh, city responded to 20 calls for service in the month of, month of March. Heritage responded to 16. Breakdown on everything if anybody wants to see it. I have it. I'm going to put it on the screen so they can see it. Okay. Other than that, I have nothing. Okay. Right. So, so basically, what that. happens in the past is you know, they read the data <coughs> off, but it's really hard to copy all this. So, we get it on the minutes. So, Bob's going to start giving something to me in the screen so I can give you guys an idea of what we are tracking for the different fire calls and fire stations. And that's good data for the fire or the town hall meeting as well, because we can build our charts with that. Mayor. I'm sorry, that's your name. <clears throat> Say mayor. Okay. Um, this is my uh, first quarter of 2024 um, marriage phase. I have the honor of um, being uh, <coughs> <coughs> uh, being uh, invited up to uh, the Summit Children's uh, Center. Uh, 
And I don't know if you're aware of where that is. It's, it's up beside the um, Geisinger Medical Center on Green Avenue. And uh, just to tell you a little bit about what goes on up there, uh, of which I wasn't aware of until uh, I started uh, spending time there, is that uh, there are close to 200 children that are up there from uh, three uh, counties. And uh, each, uh, each uh, age group is separated, and they have <coughs> developmental programs for each. And uh, it's just a wonderful place. Uh, the staff is wonderful. Uh, the children, um, as soon as they see me, they usually run over to it. They're getting to know me pretty, pretty well up there. But they are. They're, it's, uh, it's just a really nice program. And if you know of anybody that needs this preschool, uh, needs uh, some uh, loving care, uh, I would highly recommend the Summit, the Summit Center. Uh, I don't know if it was mentioned, but uh, Police Advisory Board will be meeting next week uh, on Tuesday the 16th, and a property management meeting will be Wednesday the 17th. So I'm sure we'll have uh, lots to do at both of those meetings. And I'll get back to you with the results. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other questions? Dave? Okay, our statistics for March um, calls for service was 500, um, 96 traffic citations issued, um, 36 non traffic, 129 warnings issued, and 16 parking tickets. Um, I don't have a drug report this month. Our uh, drug investigator is at training. He was at training last week and he's still at training this week. So I didn't get a report from him. Um, just want to mention the K-9 grant that was submitted. Um, we were asking for 121,336. They did an initial uh, review of that application. Um, it's still in the process. They haven't awarded the grant yet. But um, I was talking to Lisa Stallmaker who helped write the grant. She said that she's willing to <coughs> sign. But they got back to us. They're discussing the grant with us. Um, and it looks like they're willing to funded uh, at 103,853. That will cover the, the vehicle, which is the big thing, around 89,000. And the dog itself would be around 12,500. So they're willing to, uh, to fund those things. They did exclude a couple of the, the smaller items we had in the grant. Um, what we'd like to do is maybe start putting some feelers out for to cover those other items with donations or some kind of fundraising. Um, I don't want to go forward with that um, unless I have some idea of what council is thinking as far as the grant. Um, we should hear something probably by the end of the summer, <coughs> whether we're awarded the grant. But, but I said, uh, Lisa said it looks pretty good for, for us to get that grant. So. so I just wanted to get some input from council before we go out and, and put some pillars out in the community or do any kind of fundraising for the other items. The, other, the items that weren't covered were things Consume, consumable things like food, uh, vet care, those type of things are not going to cover with the grant. So we would have to find funding to cover those things. But uh, like I said, the vehicle would be covered, and that's a, that's a big item. Um, Lisa said it's rare to get vehicles for the grant. So. so if the council has any input on that, we'd appreciate it just so we know where, where to go with that. I think it'd be good if you want to go around and find out like some different vets or something if they're willing to help us out and also, you know, anybody if they uh, want to contribute <coughs> food or, you know, money towards purchases, mm -hmm. food and so on for the dog. I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean, we do have a volunteer group too that we worked with before that's willing to help us out with fundraising. Uh, that, that, um, that you on? Tim yeah. Yon and his group. Um, yeah. Do we have an officer that's going to be working with the dog? Um, we, I mean, we haven't officially appointed anyone yet, but uh, we have an officer that's interested in it. He actually helped put the grant together and wrote the grant. So. I make a motion we give you permission to 
get the group or whatever you had before or whatever to get what you can. I'll right? we'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Well, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and that's pretty much all I have for now. We'll do a couple things for the next session. Excellent recreation board. I do, I'm still writing for Dave's oh. So Dave applied for the grant for the K9, which is LSA grant, local shares account. There was three grants that were applied for with that same one. One was Dave's, one was for the wastewater treatment plant for the stormwater for 600000 to help with the cost for I&I, &I. and the other one was for 600000 for Heritage Fire Department, their building, to, to do the same thing cities kind of do, is to, to renovate their building. So they're all the same one, so like Dave said, that they won't make an announcement at the earliest end of the summer. So all three of those are in the same pot, so we don't know when they're going to come. Recreation board, right now we have about $9,300 in donations for the pool. Is there anything changed from that? Is Caitlin here? Yeah. Anything changed over that? No, no, yeah. Okay, so $9,300 donations, which is great. I think it's more than last year. The pool opening date is 5 June from 3 to 7, <coughs> but I can't remember. It would say open from that point on. Yeah, yeah, but I can't like remember. Does council have to vote for that? It, it's a set of date. Yeah, I don't think we need to do it. No, we don't need to do it. Yeah, it's going to be a free yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, no, so the poll's going to open on 5 June, and then from there, the rest of the summer, it'll be open until it closes. And the video cameras have arrived. They're down at the code's office. Um, and I know Matt's coordinated with our guys and back and forth to get those set up down there. I think they're going down Friday or something. Yeah, well, but Ben said yeah, that would so. work. Yeah. They're all anxious to get going on it, so uh, we'll get those up and. and you want to leave the, I think Ben will take care of the cameras and get them down there. You don't have to do anything. Okay. They'll, they'll get them down there. The rest of the stuff is there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And they picked up everything they needed. Do we have How, regular hours of operation figured out? It's the same from last year. It's okay. just whatever, yeah. So it was in the God's Peace Kim, was council aware of the physical like donations we've gotten so far? I don't know if they're aware of the physical. If you, uh, if you want to read them, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know if everybody's aware. City is going to donate a deep freeze for us down there. It was kind of ruined through the winter. Overhead door is um, giving us four doors and installation for free. We're in the process of that. The academy is going to remove, well, the borough guys are going to remove the tool, tool toys and take them to the academy and paint them for us. So. Caitlin, was that 2000 included in that total amount of donation from the Owls? Yes. Okay. And we have other sponsors that have <coughs> said they're going to sponsor. We just don't physically have the checks yet. So that number is going to go up dramatically over the next seven Yeah, months. I have like eight of them out as well. So up on the screen, this is the stuff we talked about. The, all the stuff yep. pretty much been done. They've and been doing a great on. job down there. Yeah. They really have. So far at the pool. Depending on weather. Let's see, EDA ramp are after doing that. We've got the camera <coughs> top, pool repairs, expansion joint filter safety, fence repair, chemical door. There's a ton of stuff they're working on down there. There's the freezer. Yep. And then uh, it's going to, we change these dates obviously depending on the 5 June date, we've got to rework those dates. Thank you. Uh, chapter 192, Septic Ordinance, that's been advertised for tonight. So what this has to do with is septic systems in the borough, which really are not supposed to have, but they do exist, but they're completely unregulated because we don't have any ordinance regulating them. So this is an ordinance that provides for inspections, maintenance requirements, um, rehabilitation where necessary of on-lot systems, 
It allows the borough to get involved if there's a malfunctioning system that is creating like a hazard or a nuisance. And um, of course, like penalties <coughs> to comply with it. So we've been working on this with codes for a few months now, but it's <coughs> it's advertised for adoption tonight. I think there's only four septics in the borough. Correct. It's only four in the whole borough, but it needs to be done because those four are important to, to deal with. Can they not look up? Is that why they're there? Or? They were grandfathered in. look into that but I still think we should adopt this ordinance because those septic systems are, are there. Yeah, now if they malfunction and they're not working order then we can force them but if they're working system I don't think we should force them. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm making motion we adopt it for now. Second. Favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next on the agenda is uh, Portnoff ordinance. So this goes back to um, uh, the borough appointing this Portnoff law firm to collect uh, delinquent taxes. So just to refresh your memory, next, starting next year, instead of delinquent taxes going to the County Tax Claim Bureau and through that whole process, the borough is going to have this Portnoff Law Firm <coughs> be their delinquent tax collector. Um, so what you need to do is adopt this ordinance, essentially appointing them as your attorney for that limited purpose and establishing a list of fees. You know what they do is they, um, you know, they put pass these fees on to the delinquent taxpayers, um, which you know the county tax claim bureau does does that too. But this would just establish a a list of fees uh, that this Portnoff firm can charge for these collections. Mark, is there any hidden fees for this Portnoff? No, I mean, as long as we have a certain number of accounts. There's 50. Yeah. As long as we have 50 delinquent, there's no fees to the borough, but we've got 100, 200. I mean, it's a ton. It's $150,000 last time I checked. Mark, you, you mentioned a, a tax bureau. Mm -hmm. Is that state, federal, or what? That's a county office. The county office. Right. Like, they're the ones who do the annual, you know, the tax upset sale and the free and clear sale. And then this port dog, port dog, they're a private, a private entity. Exactly, right. They're a, like a law firm that does this for a living. Has there been any, uh, any background on them, how they operate? Uh, they we, you know, we did a, a phone call with um, um, Kim and I, I forget who else is on the call, but they do this for a lot of municipalities, um, not in Mifflin County that I know of. But is there, is there any of those municipalities that we could call it for? We could. DCED came to see me a couple weeks ago and talked. We did talk about Portnoff, and they said they're a good organization that a lot of people in the state use. 20 some municipalities, something like that, or 30 some or more, use, use Portnoff to call. <clears throat> I'd be honest with you, I, I would just be concerned about uh, how they would handle our citizenry if there was any kind of a storm oh, yeah, sure. or anything like that. I don't. I mean, I would hope not, and I would think not. But and there, there's laws like the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act that 
really limit what any debt collector can do. So. I'm just trying to find the Portloff data in my file. I know it's in one of these files <coughs> pulled up. Because they gave us a list of all the, uh, here it is, Portloff. I was contacted before the meeting tonight by Commissioner Kodish, um, and he was encouraging us to reach out to them before we make a hasty de de um, decision on this. Um, I'm not sure he didn't go into details with that. Um, so I think I think somebody should reach out to them to see what what he has in, in mind. I'm not sure we didn't have the time the time to talk to somebody, but he, he sent me a text and said he'd like to meet with us. So whatever that's worth. Is there any deadline that we have to notify? I don't believe that we're under a real time constraint. I mean, I think it would have to be obviously this year, but I don't think that it has to be done this month. June, it's, about your now, it's too late this year for them to do 2023's taxes. Right. So it's just got to be done this year. So mm -hmm. do you guys want to set up a meeting with the commissioners and discuss it? Yeah. I would agree. Just I think we should table it until we talk to the commissioners. Okay. <coughs> Yard sale ordinance. This is a. a yeah. I, the next door just okay. This is actually, a, a, we, I found one that I had done for the borough back in 2015. I think, Matt, you, you might have remembered that. It was I'm sorry? The, the yard sale ordinance. Yes. Yeah. We had talked about it back in 2015. I, don't, I think it never really got out of law and ordinance or never uh, got advertised for, for adoption. The one I did is, is bait, follows closely a, a Burroughs Association model ordinance. Um, and it would require, it, it limits the number of yard sales people can have. There's like a $10 application fee to have a yard sale to get a permit. Um, two a year, I think, is the um, limit. So it just, uh, you know, it, it, it's whether Council wants to move forward with this. Well, we get we get the lawn bonus meeting coming up next week, yeah. so we'll probably take because when we discussed it at the last meeting, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, we didn't have a copy of the ordinance. Correct. So he got it since then. So I think we'll just cover it next Thursday. Yep. And that's the same talking about the handicap spot renewal fee. They're just FYIs as we work through. That's it's the same problem. thing Bob was talking about with the uh, inspection of the buildings. It's it's FYI. It's in the works in the process. So before that, before next week, can we see? Can I have a breakdown? of the handicap. I want to see what it really costs. I want all the costs on, the, on doing a, with man hours and everything. I got that. And I just have one short thing to talk about in the next session. Thank you. Well, I made a motion there, but nobody entertained it, so. You don't have to make a motion for that. You just take for it. The table. It's no action taken. That's okay. all you say is no action taken. You don't have to vote. It's just no no action taken. That's a legal thing. No no action taken. What is that? The yard sale? No. The or, meeting. Holding off on the porting off decision. They could just say no action oh, taken. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. I think at yard sale, someone come up there in, in 2015 because for those that do it all summer long. Well, and I have two people on the street. It's every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. I think that's you know where they are. <coughs> you drive by them too. Yeah. And they're sitting up at 5.30 in the morning when I miss your work. So why is that my only question is when that is, why, why would you limit it to two a year? I mean, if, if they want to keep paying the $10. Well, you're in Long Norris, right? Yeah. So we can talk about that next Thursday. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. All right, new and unfinished business number one DEP INI fine. So, our fine for not following the consent order for or getting it done, I guess, basically. We've got to copy the wrong page. Anyways, the, pro the proper amount is $46,838. So, this is the consent order. I, I know I sent it to council already, you have it. I met with uh, Eads today and the lawyer that's supporting us on this. He said he recommends the council approve it 
Um, because the stuff in there that, that I picked out with market stuff, it's not stuff that's going to change anything, and it's stuff that they're not going to want to change anyways. But the bottom line is he said that he recommends we approve this consent order, we pay the fine of the $46,838, and then we can go back to Derry Township of Granville and bill them accordingly for the, their portion of the legal fees <coughs> dealing with this. So it's actually number one and number two. Number one is the fine, you're approving the fine, but you have to approve it for a check. Number two is actually approving the consent agenda because we have to sign it with council president, solicitor, et cetera. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Uh, what, what motion did you make? Who made motion? Having. Having. Two, for which one? One or two or both? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> make sure. <coughs> now the money, the forty-six thousand eight thirty-eight. I'm assuming right now that it's going to be coming from the slip line project that we're postponing at Fifth Street because we have some money set aside in there, and I think that's where the money's coming from because it's all part of I. Number three, sanitary mainline interceptor cleaning. Let me find that in here. That would be under I'll explain what this is here. So this line here in red, it's near Derry Township. You got 322 here on the left. You got, I think that's Kiss Creek. Um, you got this right here, this big long line. Our equipment can't get in there and clean that out and service it because of the, the banks and the brush and stuff, so that's why we have a contractor doing this. Um, the bottom line is uh, we can also bill part of this to dairy because they use that same line. So it's all not going to be paid by us. We'll bill dairy uh, accordingly. That's $7,215. That, that will also come out of the slip line project. That would have the money set aside for that. Any motion? Yeah, move. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The DEP INI pump station IT upgrade. I'll let Lucas talk about that in a second because I think they're experts. But here, I want to show you this. So this pump station is very important for us because it obviously pumps the stuff along the lines. If it doesn't pump enough, then you get backflow and lots of other issues. So if you look at this picture here, from I think it was today or yesterday, I got it today. They went to go check the pumps, two of them, there's two pumps in that substation or pump station, because they're not pumping the amount they should. So you can see they pulled this thing out, the pump, and you can see all the rags and stuff that people throw in the sewer system uh, that's stuck in there. Here's the propeller and how it's all clogged and everything. This is what it looks supposed to look like when it's cleaned out. The problem is this pump was put in in 2009. It's never been serviced. Um, so we do have one extra pump on hand to pull this <coughs> pump out and replace it with a new one. Once that's all hooked up, because we can't lose our pumping ability, the second one will get pulled out. And we'll take a look at it. We don't know. Excuse me, if we have to buy another pump or we just maybe make parts to make one. But I talked to the guys today about it and they said right now the pump guy says it will cost just as much to repair one as to buy one. But the bottom line is we have one to replace this one. Once the other one comes out, they will make it, bring it back to council for a decision on what they want to do. This is all part of that I and I piece. So this is where I turned over to Lucas because this is the part we're talking about spending some money on, but there's no use spending money on it until it's been serviced and that's what they're doing now. So there's been no preventive maintenance done since when? 2009? 2009. Unreal. Yep. <coughs> okay, the, um, the IT upgrade is the ability to bring the flow monitoring information to the council meetings um, just like you are today with, with the street. The flow meters that you currently have out there are lacking the internet accessibility and they're also the insertion type probes that are less accurate. Um, and I apologize right now, but I'm going to be talking about the Edgewater pump station sub-basin over and over and over again for the next several weeks because that is a very small 
manageable unit right now on behalf of the borough that is subject to the SSO um, discharges that put you in violation with the DEP. So if we can really focus on that little sub-basin within the borough and bring a lot of additional and best accurate data to the table, um, we're going to be looking at solving a little problem before we get into the bigger problem. What it really does to us is this IT upgrade is going to allow us to do net metering. Because obviously there's the, the Derry Township has three major interconnections coming into this sub-basin with the pump station delivering it out. So the IT upgrade allows for the flow meters that are currently in the pump station to be made internet accessible. That's your, what we'd like to call is the queue out from the basin. But in order to figure the, the borough's contribution, <coughs> we got to subtract out the queue in from outside the municipality, which you're not responsible for. So this IT upgrade, number one, it pr pr provides accuracy, and then it provides real-time data so that we can all look at this together. Because there's going to be a lot of salesmanship to get this basin under control first before we tackle the bigger basin. So that's what this is. Um, this is really just for four meters, four locations. Number one, to put a logger and modem in the pump station to send it out into the um, Boulder, Colorado on a, a major server, and three additional meters that surround the basin that comes in from Derry Township. So we take one meter, we'll take that data, subtract out the three additional meters that come into that basin. That's what the borough contributes. So we want to make sure that we have good, accurate data to, um, to, to solve that. And like I said, this is only four, four meters. So you see a price in here, and that's a purchase price. Um, I'm not one that really wants to walk before I crawl. You already have 15 meters, so I want you to recognize the math to this. And there is a, a rental price um, in this proposal as well. So being sensitive to finances, um, you also looked at a, a rental price and a five-year over a five-year span, you're the length of the consent order, um, we're looking at a rental price of $24,000 a year, which is about the same price as um, purchasing the equipment new. Um, you guys already own meters, so it's, it's pretty much a wash, but I also want to be sensitive to the current budget, the current expenses, whether you want to rent, whether you want to buy. So $127,000 outlay initially versus Rentals of twenty-four thousand a year over the next four years is is what we looked at on the acquisition of meters just for this base. Because I do want to emphasize there are additional meters coming down the pipe as part of the consent order on the uh, the other interconnections between Granville and uh, uh, and, and the balance of Derry Township. So there is some um, some options there that, that we looked at. Is there any difference in maintenance costs if you buy or rent? Big, big difference. If, if something goes wrong and you own the equipment, you're on the hook for the maintenance. Now, we did factor in an allowable maintenance when we looked at the five-year span. So we did bring in, um, um, if you own this, you've got to send it back to, a, back to the factory to get it certified under your expense. If you rent it, it's on the agency that's, that's you're renting from. Okay? So yes, there is a big factor on the maintenance, own versus rent. If you rent it, the problem is on them. And that's one of the reasons I really, sh I steer clear of owning. I've had too many clients be disappointed that they have to do maintenance within a year and a half, two years of purchasing the meter, and it's a pretty big box. So I've had clients that are disappointed on because of the maintenance. All of a sudden, the meter goes down, you got to send it back, you don't have a spare. Um, so, so there is this that is disappointment. The only way, this is the only way we can monitor? Yes. Can't do it manually? You currently have meters out there that are basically doing a manual right. approach, but they're not as accurate and they're not, they're not going to be what I'll call justifiable information. 
because this is an upgrade in, into the technology of an upgrade into non-contact sensors. Non -con a contact sensor subject to a, a debris buildup. He showed you the rags. Well, those same, same rags come down, they get hung up on, on the probe that sits in the bottom of the pipe. The upgrade doesn't have a probe that sits in the bottom of the pipe. It's a radar that, that shoots a, a radar beam from the surface. So it, there's, it's a non-contact to the suit. Debris goes by, it's unaffected. The current technology is very impacted by debris. It can be, uh, you know, a rag gets hung up and all of a sudden it's getting a false signal. And you don't know that until you go out there and, and do your maintenance and you, know, you have to do that much more regularly to get accurate data. So you can clean it today, all of a sudden a rag comes through tonight, you don't visit the site for a week, you got a week's worth of useless data. The new technology voids that, and it's, it's non-contact. So, so that's what that's all about. With the rentals, they come out on a set schedule to do the maintenance? Yeah. Okay. yeah. We're going to be here, the EADS is going to be here throughout this um, program as we get started in the consent order. We're going to be here quite often. So we're going to be in, in charge of that. And that's all part of the consent order that's being negotiated. You look at this. The maintenance program is in the consent order as part of this whole activity. Yeah. Did you say this is the first part we should handle before we go somewhere else? I, I think it is. And and Tom had mentioned and you know for years the sewer the sewer staff has meters sort of surrounding the borough. So where Granville comes in, you know, Derry Township comes in down in, on the south end of town, they come in um, they're off of Spinagle. And, and off of their pump stations um, in, in five to seven connection points. Um, what we found in our initial data review is that that Edgewater pump station and that red line down by the Nittany gas station, we have three or four sewer manholes that are overflowing every time it rains, and that's those SSOs that we're getting fined for. Um, so what we're trying to do Step one is to clean that red line down behind Mount Rock Apartments because you might have a 12 inch pipe and if there's three inches of fill in it, yeah. you've lost 25 to 30% of your pipe capacity and then when it rains, it comes out of the manholes that much faster. So step one is going to get that all cleaned and flushed out. They're already working on getting the pumps you know, cleaned out and, and rehabbed so they're pumping full capacity so when it rains, it's not filling up the pump station and coming out the manholes because now we're going to be pumping at full capacity and then when we get into the discussions and the renegotiations on the agreement that is one of the primary points in the borough system where dairy has a large contribution because um, if you, you guys know the Walnut Street Spinago Avenue portion that's the borough up to Snedeker Energy so we have flow meter on Spinagle and flow meters up on Walnut Street that measure Derry Township coming into the borough proper and those city blocks. Well then they flow in the same lines down to that pump station. And in order for us to determine how much of that flow is Lewistown boroughs, because they're combined once they get to that borough line, we're going to put an accurate real-time flow meter at the pump station and we're going to put accurate real-time flow meters upstream where Derry Township comes into the borough. So you'll take this total, you'll, you'll take this total, you'll subtract Derry Township at their connection point and everything in between is Lewistown Borough. And right now you have meters that it's like a giant pen, it's a wand and it's got a cord and it lays in the bottom of the sewer pipe and it's regulated by a pressure gauge as to how much water is in that pipe is how much pressure's on that meter. And like he said, no matter how often you clean it, it could get dirty in an hour if something gets hung up on that probe in the pipe. And if I have a clump of toilet paper, it raises that water level an inch, that could be 10,000 gallons in a day of inaccurate flow. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in, hang these radar sensors on the manhole step. It's going to shoot down into the flow channel 
that no matter how high up and down it goes, we always have an accurate flow. And then we can take point A and point B, we can measure how much it's raining and just watch those flows go up and down and we'll be able to subtract out the difference and figure out exactly what the borough has. Thank you. The other point to consider, if you reviewed the, con the actual consent order, there are conditions in that consent order that obligate you to notify DEP within four hours of notify. Uh, you, can, you know there's times where you're not staffed adequately, <coughs> so to get a four hour response time, you really need to have an electronic device in there. And these would be that electronic device that can send somebody a text message when the pump station's at a certain level. And that level is corresponding to an SSL. So there are time functions in the consent order where this meter can support the consent order. So we'll have the ability to go to DEP and say, this is how we're going to do it to you. Uh, so there's a big change in dollars for fines moving forward on a reported SSO on four hours versus 24 hours. The dollars change dramatically uh, in the consent order. Yeah, so, so if you guys are able to report your, your manhole overflows within that four hour window, it is a $250 fine for every day that that manhole is overflowing. If we lag in our reporting over 24 hours, it's a $5,000 fine. Um, and that's where this, this region, you know, we're focusing on these four meters right now. Those manholes that are overflowing, I mean, that's right in the middle. That's the whole point of this consent order that our focus initially with borough staff is going to be to attack that region. The guys have been camering on Spinago already. They've been pulling downspouts out of the sewer system. I think they found one or two. Um, and we're going to be working with them to inspect manholes, make sure that everything's tight within the borough system. Um, and then we'll be able to utilize all the meters, the other meters that you guys have, and they might not be as sensitive areas yet that the, the meters that you're using, those probes, are, are adequate to get the general flow. It's just that this, with the SSOs and the, you know, the sensitivity of this region, we wanted to make sure we had accurate data. I have a question. If we start out with running these flow meters, yep. do we ever get an option to buy? Anytime you want. Yep. Yep. And the night, yep. the one... That's why I mentioned about crawling before we walk. Because you've got 15 of these out there. I think what I'm trying to do is re introduce this better technology to the staff, see if the staff likes it, then make that decision about purchasing them. If, if, if the staff likes them and the council likes them, rather than just jump in and buy them right, right away, um, rent for six months. If you really like them, you're going to need to expand that this, this out. So I, I think it's, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a little bit of a, a, a trial uh, on, on a rental. So that's why I'm recommending more on rental than I am jumping in and purchasing because of the maintenance too. There would be an alert. Where does that go to you guys? Or is it I'll send it to Harrisburg. No. Anybody it, 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 who wants it. <laughs> it. It essentially could go to anyone, but it would go to the operators just like all their other pump. Like they have alarms for pump failures and yeah. things. Okay, so they would deal with the generator. They would be able to get it. Yep. This 127, that's just from that pump station. The pictures up here. Um, no. That's to buy it. Yeah, so the, the 127 would be to purchase the four meters and all the computer yeah. controls. Where's the four meters go? Okay, so one will go at the pump station, <laughs> okay. and then the three would go at the connection points from right. where Derry Township comes into Spinagle <clears throat> so that we can isolate that region. So we have all that flow coming to it, and we can isolate Lewistown Burroughs amount. Okay. Well, the price makes more sense now for building for four, but not one. Correct. <coughs> exactly. Yep. And that's, that's um, like he said, it's the modem for the digital outread right to the computers. Um, and I think, I think it's a really good start. And I think the renting allows us to budget it out over five years, especially with, with what we're looking at. Well, after five years, are they ours? They, they aren't, but um, I mean, I could see technology improving that there could be a trade in and they would just upgrade them as part of our rental contract. Okay. Yep. So, so the with, all this, with all this that's going on, we've been throwing all this out in, in the Dairy Township. Have, have they been notified of what's going on? Are they up to speed and have we had meetings with them yet? 
So they have been notified. Um, we sent correspondence about the consent order from DEP. I believe we shared the draft consent order that we sent in. Um, we just received the final consent order, so I don't think that has formally been sent to them. Um, but we are meeting later this month for our quarterly meeting with the two other authorities, at which point I think we're going to have a pretty full agenda. Um, I know that you notified them, Kim, about the cleaning of the red interceptor line down behind Mount Rock Apartments because that's a shared interceptor. It conveys their flows and our flows. Per the agreement, they pay their proportionate share of that cost of the interceptor maintenance. Um, so we, we have been corresponding with them. We have not had a formal meeting yet. They refused to meet with us until the 23rd of April. Yeah, yeah every, every correspondence we've, we've sent, they've replied with, we'll address this at our, at our meeting. We'll meeting on the, on the 23rd of April. Yeah, 23rd of April. Now this price, is that installed? The 24,000? No, that does not include installation. We would be installing that as part of our services uh, yeah. related to the contract we already have the needs. Yeah, we're, we are certified installers for the Hawk flow meters. Um, they contract with us throughout the state mm -hmm. to do that. So, yeah, that's. So, okay, so originally this was a purchase of 127816 I got it. If we want to change the rental, that's fine too. But I don't know what the dollar is to rent that. So the council has to approve a dollar figure tonight. What is it? Well, pull, pull up right there. The, the, the $2,000 a month is for the three flow meters, if I can point that out. The line item number one for $450 a month for three units, that, that's two devices. Number one, it's the, it's the flow guard that sits in the channel. The second piece is the modem that sends it out. It's a wireless phone, if you would. So that's where the 24000 comes from. Yeah, two thousand a month. Two thousand a month. It's the monthly price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got a one lump sum. <clears throat> so no, and then uh, obviously the rain gauge and a um, a logger, then the wireless interface module. You already have a meter at the at, at the pump station. You have a mag meter at the pump station, but we need a logger and an interface module to send it out remotely. So you already t we're taking advantage of the equipment you already have there in the form of a a mag meter at the pump station. But we need a, a language barrier between that meter and a flow logger that puts it onto the web. Okay, so that uh, those three line items, that's what you would be renting on a monthly basis. So you'd be looking at twenty-four thousand dollars a year for two thousand dollars a month times twelve is twenty-four thousand uh, for the rental of the equipment necessary just to do that little sub base versus an out front amount. Of 127 yeah. just to do that little base, okay. so it's it's a big difference. Yeah, the 24,000 dollars a month puts us in good graces with DEP. Oh, it's a year. It's a year. It's a year. But a year. Yeah, I, thought, I sorry with that. The typo. <laughs> so is this a, a co-stars quote or this is this something that we have quote. to go out to bid? On? Yeah, that would be a co this is co-stars quote. Okay. Now you said we rent it and you put them in. How much is it going to cost us for you to install? We're just giving pieces here. We need the whole yeah. piece. Yeah, we're including that in our in our hourly rate for the quota. So yeah. it's part of it's going to be part of where I and I work. <coughs> well, I want him to say that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's part of our. And incidentally, we did get started in there in this basin um, to do a little bit more of a micromanagement. We're uh, tracing all the pipes and working in concert with with Caitlin at the codes office because the one thing that we have to pick up yet out of this out of all the borough is a detailed mapping of the storm system. Caitlin you want to help jump in here a little bit. We do still are going to have an obligation not only look at the sanitary but also the storm base, the storm system. Um, there's, there's a lot of mapping already done on the sanitary stuff. The mapping that's currently done on the storm is pretty weak. So we are going to be moving forward picking up the storm system from a GIS standpoint. Um, our guys are going to be marking and, and locating a lot of the storm facilities. Um, I think codes has the capability of interfacing with the GIS system and doing some of the, the final collection system uh, or mapping of the storm system. 
uh, as part of the GIS system. So basically what I'm saying is we're going to do as much as or as little as need to be done. Whatever can be passed into um, the borough's <coughs> current work staff, we're more than happy to do that. Even if it's just creating the mapping on the storm system. So we'll work together with the codes office to help them create the storm system, uh, but use our boots on the ground as um, the eyes and ears to, to locate certain stuff. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of work together with codes uh, and, and Caitlin on the GIS mapping as well. So we're going to do as much as or as little as we need to. And, and, and as directed by you folks. So. This is also part of that LSA grant I mentioned earlier that for the storm system, $600,000 had cut the cost on this. But I, I like this one. I mean, when I first came to looking at this, this, the pump station creates an ideal situation to manage a very small portion of the borough. And we're going to focus on that. Number one, to get in good graces with the DP. All right, we can solve this one. There's only 9,000 feet of sewer line in this basin. That you're responsible, 9,000, right? That, that's, a, that's a drop in the bucket compared to the rest of the system. So we're going to put a focus on this, and we're going to put a blitzkrieg on, on, on this particular basin to try to get this one fixed. A lot of this is going to be outside of your responsibility, though. Uh -huh. So we want to make sure we have good data that says, we're good. The problem's over there, OK? Good. Yeah, so if I can interject what Tom's saying, um, I don't think we can wait on that side of town for the grant that Kim's referring to. So I talked with the county, we can use their GIS software and we can map that section of the storm um, with council's approval, with Kim's approval, whatever. The radar for the next several months to get that basin under control. Within the, within so, the so Tom, what do you recommend council approve? This quote for $2,000 a month. I do. The second thing is we can't approve it without a CoStar's contract number on this quote. Okay. So you need to resubmit it with, to me with the CoStar's uh, contract number on there. So they can approve it tonight, but they will not sign it until we have a quote that has the CoStar's contract number on it. Gotcha. Any motion to approve it? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? How soon will you think you'd be able to start putting this thing in place, Tom? Next like 60 days, 30 days? Yeah, within, within 30 to 45 days. Okay. We'll get, we'll get moving on this right away. Right. I, want, I really would like to have this installed before we go to the next day of the school meeting. Yeah, you won't have it installed by these April. Meters come, yeah, these meters will come with a username and password. I will give this username and password to anybody that wants to. Okay. That's my goal is to try to get it out before the uh, intermunicipal meeting. Sorry. Caitlin, I think you had a good suggestion. <coughs> yeah. Uh, with, you know, utilizing our resources wherever you can. Eads is a good partner of ours, and I know they'll work well together. So I yeah. think that's a good suggestion. Thank you. All right. Summer, did you have a question? I just wanted to know if we could, there, can we split that charge with dairy? Yes. Or is it all us? No, we can, can split the charge, charge with dairy. Okay. Five, six, and seven are three handicapped parking space requests. No, not, not number eight. Uh, two, eight separate. So five, six, and seven. So this is the first time I haven't had time to go take pictures of the specific parking spots in town. <clears throat> in over three years, council's never denied one. Um, so we do have the information from the applicants. It's in your uh, council file. If you want to look at the HIPAA stuff, is you can go in there and look. What's the request an exception to call? That's number eight. I haven't gotten there yet. I mean, that's after it's five, six, and seven. I'll get to eight in a minute. Oh, okay. So five, six, and seven. We need approval to put those signs in. We have the numbers, Matt, and I'll get those from Ben tomorrow. I think it was $478 every time I put a sign in, but, um, you know, they paid a $50 fee, and that's what it is for now. So we need approval for 5, 6, and 7 to be placed. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Heavy. So we'll get to number eight. So 
this lady is also requesting a handicapped parking permit. She is she has requested the handicapped parking permit. It's in the process, but she's going in for some major surgery. That's why she requested a handicapped spot. Now the exception to policy piece, Heavy, is across from her house. There's a spot in front of her house. I bet you I had a picture of it. But is this, this up here? Can't move yeah, on. North Grand. It's already taken by somebody else. Another handicapped spot. Some guy parks there all the time. Um, so it has to go across the street. But her surgery is going to be pretty severe. So right now, those street is limited parking. She has to park it over at the library parking lot. So she can't get to the library parking lot and drive her car back and move it. So I went, met with me and Caitlin, went and rec uh, met with her. Um, I mean, this is on the up and up. Um, so she's asking for exception of policy. She does have to move during the street sweep because she can't, she can't move after the surgery. Oh, so okay. she's just asking for exception of policy for a while until, until she can heal up and then do this. Caitlin and I said we agreed with her. We would come to council and see if we can get exception of policy. So well, she can use the one in front of her house, too. I mean, she knows that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, uh, we had a motion. We have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? I mean, she called me crying and said, how about I just come and see it? So it's that, it's that serious. So it, it, you know, we were okay with it. All right. So we have to vote to talk about number nine and number ten because they were added after the agenda was published. Can you pull it up on the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's not Sorry. Right. Did you need this anymore, Lucas? You want you text me and said you want this up. Are you good no. on this? Okay. Good. All right. All right. Let's go back. Let me get the agenda up and minimize it. And we're down to the EMS stuff. So let's see. I want to put that in there. Specific specialty tax. I think this is what you're talking about. This one here? Yep. I can't blow it up anymore. It's, it's the size it is. So basically, this is, uh, I think we talked about this in finance. We talked about this, I think, in law and order. I can't remember. But the bottom line is we brought it to council to discuss whether you want to approve this now to take effect on 1 January 2025. And this is basically the millage increase to get the amount collected in taxes to equal the amount of uh, what would go to fame for the 45000 a year. I'll make a motion we increase that. Opposed to the they left out. Yeah, they Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Can we raise it to that aye? Yes. Yes. So they can go up to 0.5 on that one. Okay. Yeah. So what will happen is Mark is, uh, you know, later on you'll advertise it and stuff. And then, uh, <coughs> Do you want me to advertise yeah. it, like now or wait till the end of the I year? Wait until the end of the year. Wait until the end of the year. So it's approved now. It's one less thing to work on. Will we do that in November? It's usually yeah, December, December, November, 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 then advertise it. All right. Number 10. So number 10 is the Mifflin County. We got this in at the last minute too. This is um oh wait, there's more stuff on here. So Mifflin County Kids Connection. You guys just voted to talk about nine to ten. That's uh they do that every year on uh basically Market Street from the square down to Dorcas. And so we just need this approved for the kids. Uh it's an event that uh, they put on every year. It's pending pen dot approval. So when you guys approve it, it's it's pending pen dot approval because they own Market Street. So, uh, Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. The last thing would be executive session, which would be talking about summer help, lifeguards, meter enforcement, street sweeper enforcement. And then if you guys want to discuss it further when we come out, then we get a vote on discussing it. But you don't have to vote right now. Depending on that, I don't have anything else. All right. We're going to go into executive session. Um, Everybody leave. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take. So.